the Chinese government's crackdown in and around Tiananmen Square in 1989 came to be symbolized by this iconic image of one man blocking a tank advance. For weeks, students had occupied the space demanding economic and political reforms, and eventually, officials had had enough. They declared martial law and the military moved in. Beginning in the early hours of June 4th, soldiers fired on civilians. Estimates range from a few hundred to several thousand people killed. The movement was successfully suppressed. And its memory has also been successfully suppressed in China. 1.4 billion people, that's a fifth of the world's population, do not have ready access to the facts of what happened in Tiananmen Square. Beijing has never shown any remorse or given a clear account of what happened. A single day in 1989 completely changed Yo Weijie's life. Photos taken years before the massacre show a young family in the 1980s, Yo with her small son and her husband, Mingu. He was shot 30 years ago on June 4, 1989, and died in hospital. His was just one of hundreds, possibly thousands of deaths that night. The massacre is the worst thing that has ever been done to people in this country. The government hasn't answered the question of what happened on June 4, nor has it apologized, and I regret that very much. Not only has the government never apologized, it refuses to talk about it. Officially, these images do not exist. They are taboo. In the spring of 1989, hundreds of thousands of Chinese took to the streets of Beijing to demand reforms and freedom. The uprising against the communist leadership was spearheaded by students. One of their leaders was Voa Keishi, who was 21 at the time. He now lives in what he calls exile in Taiwan. This is how he appeared on Chinese state media back then. Today, he is hardly known in China. If you look me up, look in my name, you'd search into, let's say, Baidu, uh, the Chinese version of Google. I don't exist. Chinese government have decided to wipe up the, this part, face of the history completely. Searches on Chinese websites bring up no links or references to Voa Keishi or 1989, only a dubious article with the title Tiananmen Massacre, a myth. It's the same with school textbooks. 1989, the uprising, the deaths, all absent. The evening news on June 4th was mostly state propaganda, but one detail belied the truth. The anchors wore black to signify sorrow and sympathy about the deaths. After the broadcast, the female anchor Du Xian was barred from ever presenting the news again. The official forgetting had begun. Yo Wei Che, whose husband died in 1989, is working against this forced amnesia. She wants to remember June 4th and regularly meets others who lost loved ones that day. But they say the state is bullying and watching them. If everyone in this country had access to information about what happened, they'd be furious. But the government has concealed it for 30 years. Just because young people today know very little about it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Indeed, it did happen, but the subject is off-limits for the Chinese leadership. Forgetting and suppression instead of remembering, silence and no apology. But not everyone is playing along. Joining me now is Louisa Lim, author of The People's Republic of Amnesia, Tiananmen Revisited, a book about the power of propaganda. Louisa, give us a sense of just how thorough the erasure and propaganda has been. The erasure has been surprisingly effective in China, and particularly amongst young people, those people who were not yet born at the time in 1989. Uh, when I was writing my book, I went around the campuses of four universities, and I asked 100 students whether they could identify the picture of Tank Man, that famous picture of the young man standing in front of a line of tanks. And 
only 15 out of 100 people knew what it was. And it was interesting because it was really obvious who knew what it was and who didn't just from their body language. So it was quite clear also from the questions that they asked me that they simply had never seen this image before. And that was something that really surprised me. There are 1.4 billion people in China. Uh, I know that you did a little bit of a poll in, on the college campus, but is it really possible that the vast majority of people in China have no idea Tiananmen happened? And uh, is it possible that some people do know, they just can't talk about it openly? Well, I mean, for sure, there were people who were lived through those events and then have decided over time not to talk about them. And I think what we've seen is that the real cost of active acts of memory, of talking about what happened, of commemorating it in any way has become higher and higher. And so people have made the decision not to remember, not to talk about it and to erase it from their own, own memories. But we're also seeing quite a lot of evidence that even young people um, who might be in a position to know don't. I mean, we saw uh, one instance where a newspaper printed a picture of students or people with bullet wounds being rushed to hospital um, from 1989. And the, the reason that picture was printed was because no one working at the newspaper, not the page editor or the picture editor, not even the censor, no one recognized what that picture was. So it's a real sign that the collective institutional memory of June the 4th has been quite effectively erased. Is there any scenario you think that it's possible the Chinese government would finally acknowledge what happened in 1989? I mean, they don't deny what happened. It's just that the government is not changing its line on it. And this year, we've seen comments uh, from a government official from the defense minister and also an editorial in a government newspaper in the Global Times, which really sort of doubles down on the government position and says what we did back then was right. Uh, in fact, the editorial says uh, this move inoculated China against future turmoil and so allowed China to become rich and powerful. So that's the government line, and that shows absolutely no sign of changing anytime soon. Louisa Lim, thank you. Thank you.